All right. <laughs> I see the red light. Okay. Is we're recording. Hello. Hi. And thank you for joining us once again for episode twenty of Junk Doctor Who, mm-hmm. the Myth Makers. Myth Makers. Which is the twentieth historical. Right. Which is the twentieth serial of Doctor Who. <laughs> um, okay. So there were four episodes. And it ran from October 16, 1965 to November 6th of 1965. Um, this is the third season of Doctor Who. We're still with the first Doctor, uh, William Hartnell. We're gonna, how much longer are we with Hartnell? About the end of the season. The end of this season? The end of this season? Or this Slightly season? into the fourth season. Ah. Okay. Um, That's odd. Yeah, modern doctors change at the end of a season pretty much, or at the end of the Christmas special, uh, the very, you know, beginning of the next season. Mm-hmm. Um, there are a couple of times where the classic doctors switch in the middle of a season. Um, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. all right, we've been drinking heavily. All right, what are you doing? Oh, antagonist. Tro. That's not how you spell Trojans. Is it not? That's oh, J. I meant. I had my in my head. I s- Trogans. All right. <laughs> in my head. I said J. I don't know why I put a G. And Greek. Because I, I was thinking of Greek. All right. I got ahead of myself. I was thinking of Greek. So I put Greek a J. Con. All right. Anyway, so the Myth Makers. Yay. Um, it's four episodes, and it's an historical. Obviously. What's the new companion? Spoiler. Catalina. Catalina, yeah, or something like that. <laughs> Katrina, Catalina, yeah. Um, anyway, so uh, it's an historical that happens during the Trojan War, uh, during the Siege of Troy. And you have Odysseus, who is a complete ass. Uh, you have Agamemnon, uh, you have Achilles. Hanyak. Agamemnon's not a Hanyak. Uh, Achilles. Achilles. I thought it was interesting because in the in the in the stories and the myths and in the movies they made with Brad Pitt, they always make Achilles out to be this warrior who's a champion, and in the Doctor Who serial they make him out to be a you know a bit more of a He's he's overrated. He falls down a lot. <laughs> the first episode. Paris is the worst though. Paris is the yes. Worst. Paris was worse. Yeah. <laughs> what are we drinking today, Hannah? Hey, uh, same thing we were drinking last most week. Most time, yeah. Same we're, as my, Russian we're also wearing vodka. the exact same clothes as last okay, week. Okay. <laughs> well, okay, if you're watching the Take 2 video, we did it just before this video because the other one for episode 19 was deleted by YouTube. Technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. Or deleted by drone right. pattern. If we're, <laughs> possibly. If we're wearing different clothes, then you're seeing the original episode 19, and this was done the week after the current yeah, week, where we actually week. watched the Myth Makers. We're the same fit every week. Mm. I like the same T-shirt, so they will see the same <laughs> T-shirts over and over again. My wife gets mad. I can only so afford so many clothes. I mean, that's the take, same way. I, get, I, I take like Sarah out on a date. She goes, mm, "Nice shirt. I like it." Take her out on a second date. She goes, "Oh, another nice shirt. I like it." Third date, she goes, okay, first shirt again. Second date, <laughs> she's like, okay, he only has two shirts. <laughs> anyway, it's all gonna fun. We can take them out or we can get new shirts. We'll take them out. Mm. Yeah. All right. Anyway, so um, we are way up there uh, in that hole on the first shelf. Um, Some hole. Yeah, uh, which is the big um, Still, like I said, still heart now the first doctor. Okay. Uh, anyway, so during this serial, they end up in Troy during the Trojan War, during the Siege of Troy, and uh, the, very spoken type. Right. The Doctor ends up giving them the idea to for the Trojan War. I don't want to Trojan because the condoms. <laughs> Trojan condoms. Do you not like condoms or just Trojan condoms? I didn't say I didn't like them. I don't care for condoms, but that's true. Right? <laughs> now, why would they? Okay, so a condom's job is uh, what do you call it? It's a prophylactic. It's to prevent you from yeah, preventing anyone. Yeah. So why would they name it after the Trojans who were pregnated by the Trojan? Of <laughs> they did not have impregnable 
defenses. Impregnable defenses. <laughs> yeah. Well, so that seems like an ironic name for a condom of uh, Be, because, civilization. Because <laughs> the whole Trojans defense. were manly. It's, it's, a, it's a manly <laughs> brand. I, I guess. thought it was like a, a synonym for impregnable. <laughs> Obviously and apparently not, because <laughs> they, Troy was defeated by the Trojan horse. See? So apparently, unless you use a horse, they're impregnable. <laughs> or a whore. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so the doctor, you Vicky. You can say that on YouTube. You can say a lot on YouTube, apparently. I'm sorry. <laughs> so um, the doctor, Vicky, and Steven. Yeah, because they rhyme. End up in Troy during the Trojan War. Trojan Wars. Tro yeah. I'm pregnant. <laughs> okay. The, the doctor goes out to find out what's going on, and he catches Achilles killing. Not Odysseus, but. No, no, no. Heron? What's his name? I don't know. I didn't write that one down. You didn't write that one down? <laughs> he was dead real quick. Huh? Heron? I, you. Anyway, the doctor ends up helping inadvertently Achilles kill Paris's older brother. I can't remember his name. Hydron, Heron, or whatever. Because as Hydron was <laughs> blaspheming <laughs> Zeus because Achilles was praying to Zeus because he's losing and he tripped and he fell down and he's like, Zeus, and then and he's like, Zeus won't save you now. And he's like, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, I'll shave his beard and don't call him. He's not going to help you. And then the doctor shows up with a TARDIS, which is making thunder sounds for whatever reason. It's never done that before. Wait, wait, wait. But now it's making lightning sounds. And the doctor steps up. He surprises the Draxian. And, <laughs> and he kneels down. And he's like, oh, forgive me for blaspheming you. And then Achilles, who is losing the fight, is like, oh, hey, this is a it can be And just stabs, <laughs> stabs him. <laughs> and like, Han Yan. Horribly unhonorable victory. Dishonorable. <laughs> and the doctor calls him out on it. It's like, don't kick a man while he's, oh, he's dead. He's <laughs> dead. Yeah, he's behind you. So anyway, the doctor gets taken by Achilles, kind of prisoner, over to the camp of the Greeks. And he says, oh, if you're Zeus, you're going to help us. Well, get out of my way, I'm Zeus. Like, no, you're going to help us. It's like, really? What kind well, of relationship first, do you have uh, with uh, Achilles was like more of an aggressive uh, hospitality is like, no, I must insist, and, and, and this is one of your responsibilities, and we still respected the doctor as Zeus, and then Odysseus, the space? Odysseus shows up, ah. who doesn't believe that he's and that's when he really gets taken prisoner right. at a certain point. Okay, the characters in this are amazing. Yes. Odysseus is well played. Yeah, yeah. Uh, amazingly well played. Um, uh, oh. Priam is well played, the Which Trojan king. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very he's well played, kind of Prissy ass, but he's well played. Um, Paris is reasonably well played. I really like their take on everything. Yeah, Cassandra because, is well played. Because again, in the movies and the stories, it's like, oh, the king lost his his wife um, Helen, who he's madly in love with. But in, in this, he's like, eh, I can't. Uh, she's ran away before. Might as well leave I'm her. I'm glad to see the backside of her. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, no, that's. I really like that they just took a different spin on it. And Achilles is more of a coward who chumps himself up to be a warrior. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's it's less fairy tale and more realistic and, and comical. Right, right. It, it was a comedy. The whole thing was a comedy. Um, Paris was very funny. And yeah, Paris so was funny. Cassandra. The only person who was really serious was Cassandra, and she was correct. <laughs> she was the only she one saw right. the doom of Troy, and no, no one would believe her. And it was just amazing. Um, it's funny. And, uh, but yeah, so, okay, wait, wait, so on one side you have Odysseus and Achilles and what's the... Hydraxion, Hydron, Hydron, what's the, wait, Hydra. what's the king's name? The Greek king. Yeah, you don't remember <laughs> either, do you? I don't remember okay. that. Tro Troy. <laughs> okay, and what was the king's brother's name? Troilus. No, <laughs> that was the son of Priam, the third son of Priam. <laughs> Alright, on the Greek side, not the Trojan oh, side. Oh, Odysseus was the king's No, no, Odysseus. Brother. No, 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 Odysseus was, um... He's the king's brother. He said... And that's no, 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 first no, 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 no,
You had the yeah. king, the king's brother. Oh, okay, okay. And the guy in the blue armor. Yeah, yeah. Was in the same armor as he wore well, the, the same movie. actor wore to the other movie. And the, the movie was the um, assets. I don't know. The movie it's was the Carry movie. On. The, that one movie that no one watched. No, 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 no. no. Okay. <laughs> there was a series of movies called Carry On. The first one was Carry On Sergeant. Okay. Which starred William Hartnell, the first oh, doctor. Carry On Sergeant had William Hartnell in it. Mm. And these movies kept going into the late 90s, early 2000s. Oh, that's cool. when, the, uh, when the producer of them died. Oh. But there was a whole bunch of them, and they were spoofs of different movie tropes. Mm. Carry On Emmanuel, based on all the Emmanuel movies, you know, the, the erotic movies. <laughs> no, carry on, carry on, Columbus in 1992 for the 500th anniversary of the 1492 Columbus discovering America. Uh, there were all these carry on I've movies, the, tons of them. The, the Ernest movies. The Ernest, Ernest goes to the army. Yeah, but there was like 30 carry on movies. It's very British, incredibly British. There were like 30 of them. Sometimes they they would come out two a year. See, British comedies kind of hit or miss with me. Like. Um, have I shown you Whoops Apocalypse? You have. Uh, did you like that? It was okay. Oh, what? I'm more of a, a Monty Python and the Holy Grail. That's funny. Mm. Right. right. Mm. Do you like Rick Mail? I don't know. Like, you remember Whoops Like Ricky Gervais, very popular uh, British comedian. Mm. I don't think he's funny. Hey, you remember Whoops Apocalypse? He's like, all right, my lads. All right, Denzel, get the soul. Douglas. Leave the tiger in the bloody van. I told oh, the SWAT scene. Right, right, right. Yes, yes, right. Remember that, that guy? Right. Yeah. He was in. He was in Carry On Columbus. Okay. Along with um, Cheech and Chong. Should I add that to the? I like Cheech and Chong. Cheech and Chong. He's in there with Cheech and Chong. <laughs> and um, oh my gosh, uh, uh, Peter. Bergen. Peter Cook. And a bunch of other good people. It was amazing movies. The the whole series of movies was really funny British comedy, but you gotta like British comedy. And oh, I yeah. haven't I've seen about half of them. I wanna get all of them. Um You have a problem with nose hairs? I do. I think I have a very hairy nose. Why the hell do you ask that? <laughs> all day at work, eight hours, nine to five at work, I kept on having this tickle in my nose. And I'd, I'd go and I'd blow my nose and I'd go back and I'd wash my hands, go back to work and my nose was still tickling. Man, yeah, I didn't get it. I'd go and I'd, I'd, I'd rub my nose and I'd blow my nose and wash my hands, go back to work. It bothered me all day. I got home, I saw this just like a really long hair that was like just at the Do edge I of my Do I have any nostril. really long hairs? Is this what you're trying I, to say? I, I just want to, like, is that something you, I, can you relate? Is, have you ever experienced that? The, I'm 50, of course I can relate. But to I, that. at 23, I feel like I shouldn't have hairs growing out. Of, like it's just really. Where the hell does this come from? I just there's something on. Where in theory? Okay, do I have long hair, nose hairs? I no, no I'm not saying it because I see any. I'm just saying that's <laughs> that's something that happened to me today. And I don't okay, know. okay, okay, okay. Here, here's here's, here's the stupidly long nose hairs that have no relation whatsoever to nose this podcast. Stash. No stash. Mm. I'll drink to that. I shaved an, today. I, I got there's a, a little song. Japanese anime TV show of a guy who has a mustache man on nose hairs. <laughs> Magical power. That's Japan for you. Japan is weird. You ever watch any? Japanese animations. Mostly, I don't care for anime. Um, the only type of anime I like is Japan. <laughs> um, I can get it. I can get into some hentai. Besides that, no. <laughs> I hate the whole tropes of yeah, baby, yeah, you know, giant mouths screaming and little flying pets next to them, and you've got. Overly sexualized wait, wait, wait. girls in skirts. <laughs> He's like, no, I don't, I don't want this. <laughs> I can even say like hentai, <laughs> like homosexual. Well, hentai. So hopefully they're adults, but, <laughs> but they've got the, the Japanese, <laughs> the Japanese culture is how weird. How can you say? How can you play Dungeons and Dragons and magic and you say you can't? You don't like the little floating companions. <laughs> I don't. It bugs me. Like Legend of Zelda. What's her name? Hey, listen. I never um, watched. I don't know Zelda. Legends of the video. I've never played. <gasps> okay. After my time. This is this is my my generation, your generation. It was over here with your generation. World of Warcraft. I played World of Warcraft, but I've never done the, the Zelda. 
Alright. Anyway. Play playing games. Role play RPGs. Alright. Anyway. They have JRPGs. <laughs> so the doctor gets kind of captured and then yeah. out of the TARDIS and uh, Peter Purvis, uh, Stephen, goes to look for him. Okay? Yes. He gets captured and. Ricky stays on the TARDIS because her ankles hurt from last. Well, she stays in the TARDIS because they tell her to stay in the TARDIS, pretty much. Yeah. Um, and, and she's like 15, and they tell her to stay in the TARDIS, she does. And uh, Stephen gets captured, and Steve and the Doctor meet up in the camp of the Greeks, and they are the, they think the Doctor is Zeus, and the Doctor says, no, I'm not Zeus. And Peter, you know, says, yeah, he's not Zeus. And they say, well, give us... Why are you here? Who are you? And they actually finally tell him the truth about the time travel. They, and all they that. keep calling the doctor's bluff, and then they, right. they're you know they they pit him against Stephen, who's they think is they a, say kill him, Trojan you know, spy. Yeah. and that and they keep calling the doctor's bluff. And he's like, fine, you know this is a friend of mine. I'm not gonna kill him. We're not you know guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so finally. Um, the doctor and Stephen come clean. Is this like one of the first situations where the doctor is not able to outsmart the, his captors? Because usually he comes up with the. Pretty Ooh, good. Good question. Hold on, wait, wait. You've seen all the episodes up until now. Yeah, that's what I was. I, I can't think of a situation where they just keep calling. Well, well, no, that's not true because um, they kind of do the same thing in, in uh, Marco Polo. Where they take him captive. Correct, right? correct. And that's, that that's way, early on. Yeah. He, and he tries to do those same sort of, you know, talking his way out of it, but they don't take it. They're like, nope, you're coming with me. Yeah, uh, essentially, essentially. And that was two kinda seasons like a, ago. Kind of like a Marco Polo. Right. Um, and well, just like in Marco Polo, they eventually take the TARDIS mm -hmm. and take it into Troy. Yes. Um, so they once again move the move TARDIS. Move the TARDIS, right. And that happens in modern Doctor He was asking me during the show, oh, does that happen in modern Who? And I'm like, well, yeah. The, in the 13th, the 11th Doctor, Matt Smith, they pick up the TARDIS by helicopter and move it to the Tower of London, which is really cool. And the Doctor kind of falls out of it and is holding on by the base. He shouldn't just materialize on them. Does he ever get the hang of materializing where he wants to, or does he still? Yes, he does. Materializing eventually, on the, he does. The edge of a cliff. <laughs> well, eventually, eventually he does. Um, eventually, he gets the TARDIS. That's one of my questions because the TARDIS kind of. Early Doctor Who, like we're watching now, it's the TARDIS is very beat up and the paint looks like chipping and it's really old wood. Mm -hmm. But the TARDIS, you know, they change set pieces and aspects and they remake the TARDIS mm -hmm. as a set the police box. So it, it gets, you know, sleeker looking and it has a fresh coat of paint. So it looks a little bit nicer. Is that, you know, you, you said he masters, you know, materializing where he wants to. Is that because he upgrades his TARDIS or he does repairs? Does he ever get a Mark IV or Mark V? Because he has a Let's he has a he has a forty uh, a TARDIS forty anyway. Is when, it always the same TARDIS? When the yeah, it's the same TARDIS the whole okay. time. When the Doctor regenerates, the TARDIS sometimes changes. That was my question. And was the, the outside will change, the and the inside will change, huh. and the TARDIS will look different on the inside. Is there any explanation for why that happens? Is it like linked to um, the okay. Spectacular way. There's a kind of a vague explanation that the TARDIS kind of changed with the Doctor, but it's more of it's it's an explanation of convenience. Like we want to change the set, or we want it's like oh the TARDIS puts these rooms away and we got these new rooms for the TARDIS. Speaking of which, we see the TARDIS's wardrobe for the first time. Kind of, but we, yeah. we see stills of it because it's, right, it's a reconstruction. Yeah, all four of these episodes really are, are lost, so this is a reconstruction, unfortunately. But it's the best we can do, and we're happy to have it, and we're waiting for them to animate it, which we mm -hmm. talked about in the last video. Was yes. gonna, they are slowly truly animating all of the lost episodes of Doctor Who so they can release them all on Blu ray serials. So, speaking of uh, Doctor Regenerations. Mm -hmm. When he regenerates, his his personality and his temperament sort of changes and, and is variable. His style. Yeah. And his, 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 uh... What's the word for it? Um, personality? Uh, personality, but uh, attributes? 
Uh, yeah, because because sometimes he's more physical and other times he's more frail and right, right. old I mean, and he, 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 all, he nearly entirely changes. He has the same memories. He has the same uh, intelligence. He has the same knowledge, but he changes in in other you know many terms. So is that why? Well, um, in the reconstruction, they're interviewing the girl that played Cassandra. No, she, they interviewed the high priestess, the girl that Cassandra. That was Cassandra. I thought Cassandra. Oh, that's Catalina. That's right. Like, okay. okay. Cassandra. Wasn't that uh, Vicky's name? Who who they call Vicky? No, they called her. They called her something else. Okay. It was not so, Cassandra. <laughs> they interviewed Cassandra. And Cassandra mused, or the actress that played Cassandra mused about Hartnell, Hartnell's temperament and how he's really grumpy, grumpy and, yeah. and he has his chair during his script readings and don't sit in his chair. And, and then later on they kind of allude to the fact that why Hartnell was so grumpy was because, you know, they're, they're getting rid of the old cast, they're bringing in new cast, who right. doesn't get along with them as well, and he, and he misses... Uh, his aunt's funeral because of yeah, he misses aunt's funeral. Yeah, really sad. yeah, he misses aunt's funeral during the filming of this, and also, also, um, this serial was the very first one where Verity Lambert, the original producer of Doctor Who, mm -hmm. uh, who'd been there with him from the beginning, was not the producer because she they turned it a, over to somebody else. They had a. a uh, production block, a new right, third a new production block. block. Yeah, what is a so, production block? Right? So Barbara had moved on, mm -hmm. Ian had moved on, mm -hmm. Susan moved on, the director Hussein had moved on, and now the last person with him was the producer Verity Lambert, and now she, at the end of uh, Mission to the Unknown, mm -hmm. during the last production block, she moved on. So he was the last original cast or crew member. Mm -hmm. And he was very, well, grumpy about that. He, I mean, they said he didn't get along with the new people as well as he did. Correct, correct. He, he missed uh, Ian and Barbara and Susan. And, I mean, Susan was replaced by Vicky. And Vicky, spoilers, at the end of the serial leaves and she's replaced by Katarina. And they had new writers who were trying to put their own spin on the show and, and right. is that why they right. just... New um, producer, new director, new writers, new cast, new everything. That's the only person who was still there from the beginning was him. So because these new writers wanted to put their own spin on the show, is that why they ushered out the old companions and, and put in new companions because they wanted to do their own characters? I don't know. Which I ended up being a terrible mistake with Catalina because she's this old medieval woman who doesn't understand any of the not not science. medieval, you know, or pre Christ. Yes. I mean, um, what would you call that? Ancient. <laughs> ancient. Right. This right. ancient person who doesn't understand. All right. So so, hold on. Hold on. Okay. Is, it, is Catalina the only instance of like a medieval ancient right. companion? Let's see. Vicky away? and Kelly. Okay. So okay. Um, I think the camera can see Kelly and say, anyway, so maybe, maybe not. Um, so the doctor gets captured, has to vent the Trojan horse. Stephen and Vicky end up in Troy because the, the TARDIS gets dragged into Troy as a prize of war. Um, eventually, well, Stephen doesn't end up there because of that. Stephen ends up in the Greek camp and he yes. kind of surrenders himself to Paris, the, the silly young that he is. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know how the Trojan War started, right? Because of Helen's Troy? Was she right. went off with. Right, with Paris. Yeah, she, mm -hmm. she fell in love with Paris. Paris took her away and uh, the, the Greek king sent all of his ships, a thousand ships, to bring her back and they. They worked 10 years to sack Troy. Anyway, Paris was a stupid, cowardly Hanyak that, that ran off with her rather than fight for her against the king of the Greeks when that would have settled the war. Yeah, they, they, they issued a one-on-one -on -one combat challenge. Right, yeah. right. and that, that was the, the civilized way to do it rather than have thousands die in a war, right? It was just a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, but I love how they portrayed 
portrayed him as a drunk. It was so yes. funny. Not not the Paris, Greek. but the head of the Greeks. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, so eventually... Who do you think would have won? <laughs> who knows? He was old. Paris was a coward. He was kind of a coward. Who knows? A- at least portrayed in this. Um, anyways, so... Oh, where the hell was I? <laughs> okay, so... Eventually, the doctor is forced to come up with the Trojan horse. The doctor, Odysseus, and several of Odysseus' core men get in the horse, and they, of course, get out of the horse at nightfall, open up the gates. Everyone is slaughtered. Um, Ke- uh, what's her name? Katarina? I not, think so. Catalina. No, not oh. not Cal- oh. Catalina, but the, 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 priest, the high priestess. Oh. Katrina? I don't know. Why did I not write her name down? I wrote down Paris's sister, high priestess. I didn't write her name down. <laughs> Alright. So the high priestess, Paris's sister, I think Catalina. Yeah, the lady that did the interview. In the... Right, right. She warns everybody of what's going to happen. She, she actually had a, like a dream depicting the Trojan horse. And right, right, kind of, right. Which and she was actually uh, a, a seer of Right. It's one of the, time, the few times in Doctor Who that they have a mystical thing that is mm-hmm. not explained away by aliens. Mm-hmm. Most or of the time in Doctor Who, it's all explained away by she aliens. Is a time lord? Because time lords have mental powers like... like he's not a time lord. Maybe. Something, something <laughs> earthly Maybe and mystical. Right. And let, it, you know, let it be earthly and mystical. It's <laughs> awesome. Mm. So there is magic canon. Did you finish your drink? Yes. Oh, well, you, you need to get some more. <laughs> anyway, so um, the High Priestess Catalina says that... We'll, we'll get some more. You, you've got more. Um, the High Priestess says they're going to let something in and it'll kill them, and it actually does. In the meantime, uh, Vicky... Falls in love with uh, Troilus. Troilus, T R O I L U S, who is the third son of what's his name? Priam. Yes. He was the third son of Priam. Uh, is the younger son of Paris. Um, who Troilus is seventeen? Well, sixteen, soon to be seventeen, and Vicky is fourteen or fifteen. Going. So, so it, it's a especially appropriate age for the time. Um, anyway, they fall in love, even though she's a captured possible spy. Don't, and no, don't. And um, anyway, so eventually the horse is brought in. The Greeks, of course, sack Troy, and. Uh, the doctor and Stephen get to the TARDIS, although Stephen is injured. Yes, on the way to TARDIS. Um, yeah, he's Which injured. Which turns him into a, a tetanus. <laughs> no, <it's, laughs> he breaks out fever. It probably as part of his muscle uh, slice, but it is right. Anyway, they get to the TARDIS along with Catalina, who is a clueless. Only introduced in the fourth of the four episodes, handmade of shoehorned in there. Yeah, shoehorned in there. The, the high priestess. The high priestess. The same way the whole love story is shoehorned in. I mean, we don't see uh, Troilina. What's his name? Troilus. <laughs> Troilus. Troilina. Troilina. We don't see Troilina until the third episode. They they shoehorn him in. They shoehorn Catalina. Kind of into that when the uh, the king's talking to. Vicky, and he's like, I wish my son would find a person like you. But they, no, no, but that's, we're talking about Paris, because Paris got um, off of Helena. But it's shoehorned in the yeah. same way Catalina shoehorned in. Anyway, so this was the, the, everything was shoehorned in to make what, changes. So why is it they did that? Because they said that Vic, the actress that played Vicky wasn't happy with her role. Right. But at but, the same time, she's really surprised when they didn't renew her contract for the next... She's, correct. Her contract was not renewed. 
she ends up in the fourth episode staying in ancient Troy uh, with Troy Troilus. Troilus. So Vicky and Troilus run off with Troilus's cousin, Ephesus, or Troy. whatever his name, to go make a new Troy. So she leaves the TARDIS crew. No more Vicky. Bye, Vicky. Bye, Vicky. There. Well, bye, bye, Vicky. And there's no goodbye either. But she hugs the TARDIS and then just runs off. And the Doctor sees well, she, ta- she talks to the Doctor looks... inside the TARDIS. Concerned. And... Yeah. And she hugs the TARDIS and then she runs really. off. Yeah. So. Very um, uncertain moment. Right. So. And Catalina, uh, who's a Trojan handmaiden and doesn't know anything about anything, ends up helping Stephen into the TARDIS during the sack of Troy, and then the TARDIS takes off. Um, Do you find it kind of... So, uh, they say that they don't like Catalina because there's not a whole lot of possibility with a... Potential, yeah. Potential with an ancient person who doesn't understand what's going on. Right. But really, I feel like it's refreshing because every companion they have, they, they make a joke about how they don't understand anything. And, you know, Barbara and Ian would go on and on about, explain this to us, Doctor. And he's like, oh, it's simple. And they're like, well, it's not simple. And then, and it was always funny how they didn't know what was going on and how anything worked in the TARDIS. And they're kind of clueless because they're from, you know, 1960, 59, what? 63 to 65. 1963, uh, England, and, and they didn't understand how time travel worked and everything. And then here comes this ancient handmaiden, Catalina, and of course she doesn't understand understand anything, but because she's so superstitious and religious, she has her own explanations for everything. She gets on the TARDIS, she's like, you're a god, this is the afterlife. Perfect. I don't need any explanations. She's like, you're carrying me through to the afterlife. He's like, no, and she's like, I don't care what you say, you're a god, this is this Right, right. I think that's funny, I kind of enjoyed it. It, it was fun, the problem is they they wrote her in to replace Vicky um, and noticed that both of the young females in the show have now been soft off to, you know, soft off to they're in love with somebody, so they've got to stay with them. And that's how they get rid of them. Um, but she, she's so well, far back. Vicky wasn't really, I mean, no, Vicky Susan, was Susan wasn't really ready to make that choice on her own. She kind of gets ditched by the doctor. Well, but she's just like, made, by the way, she's making this choice, saying, right? But um, well, he kind of made it for her. Vicky specifically <laughs> makes it. Yes, Vicky right. makes her own choice. But it's a Season common is. thing in classic Doctor Who when the females leave, they leave us there. They've fallen in love. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are several future companions who do the exact same thing. Right. Um, anyway, uh, Catalina is spoilers if you're watching that. The show's been out 50 years. If you haven't seen this by now, you know. Well, whatever. maybe they're watching along with this. Uh, maybe. Anyway, yeah. can they possess your collection? <laughs> is it, is it, sure. no, like, none of this is even really accessible if you wanted. The vast majority of this is out of print at the moment. Yes. But as they make the Blu rays, it will keep becoming in a print in the Blu ray form. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, but at the moment, it's, it's the vast majority of it is out of print. Yeah. yeah. It'd be um, hard to watch all this. Right, right. But hopefully you're watching it with us, or at least experiencing it with us in some fashion, if not for anything else than just for us. Spoiler. Um, spoilers. Anyway, <laughs> Catalina was soon discovered to be a handmaiden from Troy, cannot understand crap, and it does not make a companion. So she lasts like five episodes and they kill her off. She doesn't even make it through the serial. The next, no, the dog smash plan, she does not make it to the dog smash plan. It is the first serial where a companion dies, and two companions die during the dog smash plan. Oh. Oh, that's sad. That's sad, yeah. Um, but it, it's what happens. Um, there's two companions. Let's, you let's, let's talk about that. So, here's the doctor. He's a time lord. Right. He has right. his TARDIS, his time machine. He's, he's uh, having all these different adventures. Mm-hmm. At, in the beginning, we assume the first uh, generation of, of the Doctor was Hartnell, 
Mm-hmm. Like there were no previous, he didn't regenerate into her. No, he, he at, at the beginning when he leaves his home planet, he brings his his niece with him, uh, who's Susan, granddaughter, granddaughter. He brings his granddaughter, who also might be a time lord, and they go on adventures together. And then, um, he he kind of uh, unintentionally brings Barbara and Ian with him. And in every single episode, they're put into this uh, life-threatening situation. They're taken captive. They're in wars. They're in conflict. Their life is constantly in danger. And 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 then you know finally they get home. And and you know Vicky's life is constantly in danger. Uh, Stephen's life is constantly in danger. Catalina's life is constantly in danger until you know Catalina and Stephen die. Um, Vicky makes it away because she falls in love. Uh, Barbara and Ian happen to make a happy ending. They make it home happily. But do you think one of the reasons why the Doctor made that decision for Susan was he first saw like just the danger of these adventures, and that's why he leaves her on the planet? With her boyfriend, and is it moral that the doctor just takes on these companions and constantly puts them in danger? Okay, believe it or not, that is, those are questions which are seriously addressed in 21st century Doctor Who, oh. in the current revival. It comes up often. Seriously, it does is that come why up often. The doctor gets in trouble with the. Well, no, people are questioning him, and they're like, well, you know, what happens to your companions? And he has to explain to them, you know, he's like, most of them find their way home, but sometimes some of them die. And, and does that mean he's, he's selfish to take these people on these really dangerous adventures because he's lonely? Because then Barbara and Ian go home, and, you know, and he says, I miss them, and, and is that why he's taking these new companions? Because he... He, in a way, he wants to protect Susan, maybe, and that's why he leaves her. But then he takes Vicky because he's lonely, and he 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 looks no, at her they fondly because he, Vicky. They, yeah. Not a rescue. yeah, but he never you know drops her off in a safe situation. He just keeps taking her with her, him on this these very dangerous adventures where they're always in a life threatening situation. Well, I mean, she she's in it for like six or seven serials. I mean, there's nowhere you can just dump her <laughs> off. She well, wants to be there. Well, <laughs> They're always in danger. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, ignoring Vicky, but I mean, seriously, the doctor helps those whom he helps. They mostly choose to stay with him. If they want to leave, they can leave, like Ian and Barbara did. Well, Ian and, and Barbara like, didn't have much of a choice. No, no, no they, 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 they were constantly asking they were to be with sent him, home. But when they finally had the opportunity to be sent home, they were sent home. Mm-hmm. And they did leave. And he let them leave, and that's fine. Yeah. And there are future companions who choose to leave. There are future companions who choose to stay. Uh, some end up in other places, like Susan. Some end up dead. Um, so many others end up going where they want to go. But you know, uh, especially with the the some of the male companions get kind of fobbed off to do weird things. Uh, some of the female companions get run off because they fall in love and want to get married like susan like vicky um and, and you'll meet her later like lila okay right. much She's lying. huh lila 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 and stitch no lila okay not hawaiian <laughs> i um, just wanted to play a devil's advocate and, and discuss the possible inferior morals of or uh in in in, in city i can't think of the word <laughs> the dark morals of the doctor, but but you think he's a morally upright and person? Reasonably. Reasonably. Not the best. There, there are times he lies, there are times he deceives, but he, generally speaking, is doing the right thing. Some and, would argue that uh, the doctor consigned the time meddler to a very nefarious and what the time meddler was doing? He, he was doing nothing, it. nothing different than the doctor did in this serial when he does. We gives the the Greeks the plans for the Trojan horse. He's he's. I would argue the doctor is making history correct. The time meddler is trying to completely change history. No, per, but perhaps that's why history is the way it was because he meddled in it. Like history creates itself. Like that's why history was the way it was because he traveled back in time and gave them the plans like the same way he gave the guy the idea to burn down he gave the, Nero the idea to burn down Rome, Rome. Right, right, right. Rome and the same way 
at first he, he tries to take the 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 right way around it of saying, "Hey, I can't meddle in time." They're like, well, just tell him to get, tell him about the horse, the Trojan horse, because that's how it happens. He's like, "No, I can't meddle in time." He comes up with this no, plan no, no, about he the says that's He doesn't believe. He doesn't believe that that he actually happened. Homer happen. made it oh, up. Okay. Yeah, that's right. I forgot. Yeah, so he instead, he, he makes up this uh, plan about uh, sending paper, man-sized paper airplanes off of trebuchets into the <laughs> go over He's the walls. Catapults. He never catapults. used the term trebuchet, okay. but I love trebuchets. All right, all right. <laughs> but 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 he meddled in time. <laughs> he he helped Nero burn down Rome. He gave him the idea. He gave the Greeks the idea for the Trojan horse. And then he comes across the time meddler who's trying to change history for the better. And no, he can no, not to, necessarily for the well, better. He's trying to set up a civilization as a. Okay. I don't know. Okay. You're trying to question <laughs> is the doctor any different from someone else? Who there's an the argument time? there. There is an argument there. <laughs> but, okay, okay, two things. First of all, the doctors always change things towards the way they are. When he gave the Trojans, the oh, way the <laughs> when he gave the Greeks the idea for the Trojan horse, it fit into what had already happened. Okay, when he helped keep in the time of the uh, serial, the uh, the facts were happening. He kept the facts happening to the way they are. He kept the facts happening the way they are. Um, he steers things the way they should be. The time of the sh was trying to steer things away but, from they but should maybe not be. He thinks he's steering the way things should be because he made them be that way. Well, <laughs> yeah, who bloody knows? Okay, he's our protagonist. He's the hero. He's the knight in shining armor that comes out of the dark to save things. Okay. We'll run over that. All right. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? I think. Um, we answered most of them when you were trying to explain the plot and I kept interrupting to ask questions. <laughs> anyway, Vicky goes bye-bye, she stays there, we get Katarina, she'll die soon. Oh, do you want to talk about the poorly photoshopped faces on the... <laughs> oh, God, no, no, no. That's no. a reconstruction. It's a reconstruction, it's, it's, not, it's okay. Uh, well, then. Mm. Mm. Oh, what, what did the, the doctor say at the very end? He said he's not a god and... He's not a doctor? Do you say he's not a god twice or do you say he's not a doctor? No, no, say he's not a god. And then the Catalina thought he was a god. He's like, call me like, the call doctor. Call me the doctor, I'm not a god. Says, okay. Get I it. just misunderstood. Right. So next time, be it next week or the week after, probably the week after, we're going to watch um, Serial 21, which will be episode 21, The Dog's Master Plan. All right, this is the giant brick wall for people watching the classic stuff. Well, people, uh, the brick wall is, is, is it that people can't even watch the old stuff? Because it's such well, a no, 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 it's 12 episodes, okay? It's mm -hmm. very political, yes. not, not action-oriented, political. Only three of the 12 episodes exist, the others are all reconstructions. And it's political, it's dry, it's boring, and it's six hours long. <laughs> Are so, you not a fan of the Dalek's Master Plan? No, I like it for other reasons, but for many, 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 many people, if they're trying to watch from the beginning through, this is the brick wall where they stop. A lot of people felt that way about um, the prequel to Star Wars, because you had you know, the original three Star Wars films, which was this space fantasy and this action and this adventure. And then you go into the prequels, which are very political. Crappy. And they talk about the con trade confederation and the republic, and it gets really into meh. <laughs> okay, so anyway. Um, you feel well, like it's, it's the same way with the Daleks Master the Plan? The prequels are bad. No, I don't know. This is. Well, for that reason, specific. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, we're drunk, it's okay, this is Drunk Dr. Who. Um, and then next time we see you, we'll be doing the Dog Smasher plan. I don't know how long the video will be because it's six hours of visual. Three hours of podcast. How long does the camera run? The camera, the camera barely lasts two and a half hours. If we go beyond that, it's, it'll shut down. Uh, we'll have to do a part two later or something, you know? Okay. Like do with the, what if uh, we don't know it shuts down? 
Is no. it noticeable? When, when the red light goes, goes, it goes. What if we don't notice the red light turns on? Then we're talking for nothing. <laughs> right. But anyway, uh, you have fun. We'll have fun. Hope you're watching with us. And we will see you next time with the Deluxe Master Plan. Don't forget to like, favorite, subscribe. We comment, have 18 viewers. Share, post. Hey, 20 ep we're keeping upload. we're keeping with viewers and episodes. We have 20 episodes like when this share, says 18 viewers. viewers. Subscribe, turn on notifications. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Share, okay. post, comment. <laughs> subscribe. Comment. We had one comment subscribe. out of 18 episodes. Sponsor. One comment. Was that my comment? No, it was <laughs> not your comment. I commented a couple of times.